please. Please, you mustn't go. Not yet. You have a whole world, a whole lifetime ahead of you without me. <laughs> Surely you can spare me one minute? Just one minute? That one minute will stretch into five more shows. You on your way? Yeah, Dave's picking me up. I'll call you when I get there, Charlie. What can I say? What is there for me to say? What can anyone say? Is this seminar you're going to all lectures and work? Or will you find some time to enjoy yourself? Uh, we'll have a pretty full schedule during the day, Charlie, but uh, we'll have our evenings off. <laughs> Does she always cry like that? Yeah, that's the name of the show. Nor all your tears. <laughs> Nothing else, huh? Game shows. Last time I watched a game show with an iron on my hand, I scorched three shirts. <laughs> well, there's Dave. Go. I'm going. <laughs> See you, Charlie. Go on, you're not really here. You never have been. <laughs> Have a good time. I hate to leave her like this. I'll fill you in how it comes out when you get back. Okay, Charlie. Why do I do everything to drive you away when all I really want is to have you near me? Why? 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 How long will Dad be away at the seminar? Middle of next week. Hey, did I tell you guys I'm producing a TV show? Can I be on it? Uh, no kids. It's a college thing. We have a little TV studio on campus. It's serious-minded stuff. Serious-minded? And you're going to produce it? <laughs> the idea is to get a bigger audience for good things. Our committee's having a meeting tomorrow, so I have to catch the show we're telecasting tonight. What time? Right now. Hey, Robbie, you can't turn your program on now. It's almost time for blast off. Countdown's coming up. <laughs> This is important, Ernie. But so's Blastoff. Last week, the rocket reactor power on the Galaxy Queen had lost its heterogeneity, and we're drifting into a time war. Well, they'll pull out of it. Sure, but how? Uncle Charlie, we made a deal. I get to watch Blastoff, and then at 7.30, Chip gets to see Free Agent. And then at 8, you get to watch the Jerry O'Dowd show, starring Jerry O'Dowd. Ernie, it won't hurt us to interrupt our regular schedule for an important event. The networks do it. Well, so is my program, the Interrupt. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> I am Professor Hugo von Rensselaer. And for the next 30 minutes, we are going to have fun with Maxima and Minima. He must mean Maxine and Minnie. I think it was a sister act. <laughs> Ready for a little shocker? Take a look at this. I'll wager you've never seen anything like that on TV. Not recently. Will this we interrupt our regularly scheduled program? I'm gonna go do my homework. It's more interesting. <laughs> he better bring on Maxine and Minnie, quick. Gripped by the implications? Here, we have a clear application of the optimization theory and zero-sum matrix games. Okay, Ernie. I think I got the idea why they want different programs. Let's see how things are going on the old Galaxy Queen. Oh, boy. Thanks, Rob. You're not on the channel. This is it. <laughs> There's nothing on the screen. How come I don't see anything? You're not supposed to. This is what happens when you get caught in a time war. The whole crew ended up invisible. <laughs> appointed on this committee was because all of us in English lit criticized TV. Okay, here's our chance to do it better. Well, back to Professor Von Rensselaer in his math lecture. Oh, let's face it. The practical thing to do is to close down. Anyway, amateur TV's a drag. See you in class. 
Well, why don't we just jot down some ideas? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna pick the nose of this. Uh, I'm Douglas. Uh, can I help you? No, but I can help you. I'd like to join the TV Disaster Committee. Well, uh, move right in. Uh, I guess last night's TV program was sort of a disaster. All year long, it's been something less than spectacular. <laughs> I'm not talking about a Weasley little college program. I mean TV, the whole ball of wax, the wasteland. Well, we better prove we can do better before we criticize. Has anyone suggested reality? That's new. <laughs> Brand new. Never been attempted. Show it the way it is. The real scene. Lift up the big wet rock and expose all the little crawling things underneath. Oh, okay, hold on just a second. You know, you, you really don't have any right to come in here and just tell us what to do. Who are you anyway? Vanessa Harrington, journalism major. I heard the professors were taking a run out on the TV show. So I thought this would be our chance. The smallest chance to say something worth saying. But I can see that... No, Miss Harrington, we're perfectly willing to discuss this. All right. I'll explain the real scene to you. And what you like, you bring back to these fat cats. Yes, meeting is adjourned. I explained to your boss about it was me that put the frog in his desk, and he's not going to fire you. And Mrs. Ponsonby is not going to sue you for what my pet badger did to her dahlias. And we didn't forget it was your birthday. We just wanted to surprise you. We have something special for you. That nobody else can give you. A picture of all three of us. <laughs> Bunch of clunky kids. I think they're me. Chip, this is a rerun. We've already seen it. Why don't we watch Poochie Dog instead? That's a nice, quiet show, except for the barking. It isn't fair. The deal is, I get Son of War paint if I give you Kelly's kids. Yeah, but why do you want to watch Son of War paint again when you know what's going to happen? I forget how it ends. The Indians capture the girl, but her father's a doctor, and he's the only one who can save the life of the chief's son, who's dying of a mysterious disease. What do you want to hear? And the doctor cures the chief's son, and Wade Tolliver proves the Indians are good guys, too. The only bad guy is the guy in the fancy suit, right there. I still want to watch it. Well, so let's just see what Poochie's doing. What's the matter with you two? I could hear you out in the kitchen. It was my turn to choose a program, and I chose Son of War Paint. That's why I never get to see Poochie. Well, let me tell you something. And you too. You're not going to see Poochie or Son of War Paint or anything else for a week. A week? If you can't watch television and act like civilized human beings, then you're not going to watch television. I'm sorry, Uncle Charlie. It won't happen again. Me too. Give us another chance. No more chances. Maybe after a week without television, you'll remember there's some other important things, like having a little consideration for other people. A whole week? A whole week without TV? A whole week. Nobody to turn on this set for a whole week. Nobody? Nobody. Not even you? Not... <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> The first thing we have to do is bring down the dad image on TV. There are two kinds of dads. The all-knowing great white father, or the boo mom and the kids bounce their laughs off of. We'll show them some reality, like your family and mine. 
Uh, Vanessa, why don't we just leave my family out of it? I think we'll get along fine if we just stick with TV. Okay. We start with a family situation comedy. Dad and all that. Only we show them the real live family. Something they can look at and know what it is. Vanessa, you're pretty and you're bright. But what are you so bitter about? What's bitter about the truth? Take a good look around you. Read the papers. Talk to people. Then try to relate it to what you see on TV. Well, well I, I never thought of it that way before. Up till now. I like you, Robbie. Your eyes are opening. We're going to put on a program to knock them off their pins. As soon as they've had a look at reality. Who's going to write all this reality? Well, who else? I've seen it the way it is. Turn in, huh? Yeah, Dave. It's been a long day. I'm tired. Catch up in my sleep. Oh, Steve, mm -hmm. would it bother you if I turned the television on for a little while? Oh, no, go ahead, Dave. It won't bother me. Nothing could keep me awake tonight. <laughs> American War. Been on almost six years. Well, that's pretty remarkable when you stop to think the Spanish-American War lasted less than four months. <laughs> yeah. Charlie? No. <laughs> Just one little program? Any program? I said that set wasn't going on, and it's not going on. I can't do my homework without television. What are you talking about? I'm used to having the television on when I'm doing my homework. It's hard to work without it. <laughs> You're wasting your time. Well, how about just the picture with no sound? Well, how about the sound with no picture? <laughs> Uncle Charlie, we're going to miss the first run of a major studio feature motion picture, starring Dawes Hannaford. <laughs> and we're missing Teenage Frenzy right now. Sissy and Cheryl are co-hosting, and the special guest stars are Nero and his firemen. It's so quiet around here, I can't hear you. Okay, I guess I'll go upstairs and study my government. We're studying the Constitution. You know, there's a part that forbids cruel and unusual punishments. <laughs> People have got along without television for thousands of years. We can get along without it for one week. I'm going up, too. What are you taking the TV magazine for? So I can read up on what I'm missing. <laughs> Watching Frenzy. You know, when his firemen are on. Out there? On the Buckley set, across the street. Let me see, please. What's the matter? A real low down, dirty trick. Mrs. 
gawk like pulls of drapes. <laughs> television in this house for a week. Oh, this way, huh? Yeah. At the time, it seemed like a good idea. But ever since then, I've been asking myself, why? 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 <laughs> you could rest it up? No, but Dave did. You know, Charlie, I found out there's a late, 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 late show. It's early to bed for me for the next week. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, fellas. I have a good trip? Yeah, fine. I have any fun? Well, I, uh, I watched the late, late, late... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uncle Charlie told you about the... Yeah, he told me. I imagine it was a little rough on you guys, huh? I'll tell you what. The week isn't up until tomorrow. But to celebrate your dad's coming home, and because Robbie's going to be on tonight, I'll lift the TV ban as of now. Hey, great. Thanks, Uncle Charlie. We promise never to argue about programs again. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we regret that nor all your tears regularly scheduled at this time, will not be seen. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to College TV. Tonight, we present the first program of a new series, The Way It Is. Tonight's show was written and directed by Vanessa Harrington, produced by Robert Douglas. <laughs> That's great. My son, the producer. <laughs> the scene is the kitchen of an ordinary, everyday, real-life family. It is early morning. That's reality. Give me the old phony baloney. Next week, can I watch Blast Off? You certainly can, her. I think we'll all join. <laughs> Robbie, wasn't it wonderful? We really told them off. You, you thought that was good? Marvelous. The real scene, just like we promised. Next week, we'll stab them again. Uh, Vanessa, there won't be any next week. The dean called. The reaction was pretty bad. Oh. You should have expected it. You should have known they wouldn't have the courage to go through with it. The conformists got to them again. Vanessa, nobody got to anybody. It, it was just bad. You know, you seem to think that nice people aren't reality. Oh, come on, Robbie. You know what home life is. The same as I do. Is your family like what we did here tonight? Well, yes. Of course. Isn't... Vanessa, I'm, I'm sorry for it.
Oh, you went to bed a long time ago. What are you doing in front of the TV set? Didn't Robbie's program kill you? I, mean, I went to bed, Charlie, but I couldn't go to sleep. I kept thinking about this old movie I watched in the hotel room with Dave Welsh. I watched it every night for a week, but I could never stay awake long enough to see how it ended. <laughs> I thought if I came down and saw it tonight, I could forget about it. <laughs> I'm not going to make it tonight either. Well, I'll turn it off. You can try again tomorrow night. Well, maybe one of these days I'll have it on the early, early, early show, and I'll catch it some morning before breakfast. Good night, Charlie. Good night. I saw I traded Amy Jenkins for this potholder she made in sewing. Her mother's loaded with potholders. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm down to my last potholder. I wanted to give you something you could use. Something that every time you didn't burn your fingers, you'd remember it was from your friend Ernie. <laughs> sure. I'll remember it was a token of your high regard. Yours and Amy Jenkins. <laughs> Buy it. <laughs> hey, let's do an apple pie. You should have been born a bloodhound. Oh, here, your shirts are finished. Hey, my good shirt that had the tear worker caught on the fence in the mustard spot. What a neat job. Uncle Charlie can mend stuff better than any other mother on the block. <laughs> Come on, you guys, get out of here. I don't want you to see a grown man cry. <laughs> Just as soon as I make me a sandwich. Oh, no, you stop all the peanut butter. I'll give you half of mine. Oh, thanks, sir. I'll see you later, Uncle Charlie. See you, Uncle Charlie. Up. And don't get peanut butter on those sweaters. Oh, hi, Charlie. Hey, Steve, what are you doing home so early? No, I've got a dinner date. I came home to change clothes. Boy, something smells good. Hot roast. I knew it. My favorite dish, and I'm going to have to miss it. Oh, uh, here, I brought your paper. Oh, Steve, you brought me the Bryant Park shopper again. I wish you wouldn't drive six blocks out of your way just to pick up my favorite shopping news. Oh, it's no trouble, Charlie. Besides, you keep saying the editor of the Tribune's a knucklehead. <laughs> yeah, but the way you guys are treating me around here, I'm liable to get spoiled. Ernie made a breadboard, and he traded it to Amy Jenkins for this beautiful pot holder. Just for me. <laughs> and you keep saying nobody around here appreciates you, Charlie. Even Amy Jenkins appreciates you. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make your family happy? Give them the greatest gift of all. A lot in Whispering Pines. The vacation paradise. $75 down, $10 a month. Whispering Pines Development Company. Vacation paradise. <laughs> Mr. O'Casey, how do you do? I read your ad in the shopper. It sounds pretty good. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, that's a nice music. Yes, well, won't you sit down, Mr. O'Casey? Well, thank you. Yes, we feel that, uh, that music brings one the proper and restful, serene atmosphere of Whispering Pines. I want the best spot in the whole development. All right, you guys, come on. Okay, Charlie. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's the new decoration, Charlie? We can eat pine cones? <laughs> no. <laughs> Steve, pull the ribbon. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, what's this? Whispering pines? What's whispering pines? Just what it says. Oh, yeah, but what does it mean? Whispering pines is the newest, classiest, most elegant, and outstanding fun spot in the state. Well, 
Looks like a great place. Beautiful woods, huh? I bought a lot. You bought a lot? Yeah, so we got a place to go on weekends. Oh. Uncle Charlie, you're, you're too much. Oh, well, you didn't have to do anything like this. I'm glad he did. I always wanted to spend a weekend in an elegant, fun spot. <laughs> I had a few bucks that weren't busy, so it's a good investment. Well, that's great. Oh, I'll tell you. Why don't we drive up to uh, Whispering Pines this weekend and take a look at Charlie's lot? Yeah. Oh, not Charlie's lot. Our family lot. <laughs> Well, here we are, Charlie. Whispering Pines. Mm -hmm. I don't see any pines. Oh, well, we'd probably get into the farther up. Can we stay here all summer, Dad? Well, that's up to Charlie. Well, we'll get our cabin fixed up so we won't be ashamed in front of our high-class neighbors. The place will be open the year round. Skating in winter and swimming in summer. I didn't realize living in a family had so many fringe benefits. <laughs> well, let's drive on, Charlie. Find the lot, huh? Suppose we stop at the clubhouse and have lunch and get directions. Good idea. Yeah. I'm hungry. There's a tent over there. Yeah. Hey, Robbie, see if there's some Jasper in that tent and ask him to wait to the clubhouse. Okay. I understood the clubhouse is between the 18 hole golf course and the Olympic swimming pool. Huh. Hello? Anybody in there? Hi. Hi. What do you want? Uh, we were looking for Whispering Pines. Well, you read the sign, didn't you? Well, yes. You see, my uncle owns one of the lots here, and, uh, well, we'd like to have lunch at the clubhouse before looking over his property. <laughs> I could offer you half my bologna sandwich. <laughs> Thanks, but, uh... Well, which way is the clubhouse? You're looking at it. Excuse me. Dad! Uncle Charlie! All you guys, I think you better come over here for a second. Uh, this tent is the clubhouse. <laughs> Come on, cut out the kidding. I saw a picture of the clubhouse. It was gorgeous. Oh, mister, what you saw was what we call a, a fact semile of the clubhouse. What it's going to look like when the building. Uh, the clubhouse is between the golf course and the Olympic swimming pool. You just point out where they are, and we'll find the clubhouse. All righty. Uh, the golf course, that away. <laughs> Swimming pool, right over there. Uh. Oh, no. I brought my swimming trunks. I even brought my snorkel. Uh, fellas. Hey, you got here a little early. Uh, maybe a year or so. You mean to tell me all I bought was a mess of trees and rocks? Charlie, uh, I suppose you signed something. Well, yes, I, uh, I had to grab a lot fast. Uh, he said they were going like hotcakes. I gave him a check. Didn't you read the contract? Well, uh, sort of. <laughs> I see. Well, I suppose they'll start building as soon as they've sold all the lots. Well, in the meantime, there's no reason you shouldn't, well, you shouldn't enjoy the lot. I mean, uh, it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Yeah, what I like is it's so, uh, private. <laughs> well, real neat. We'll have the whole place to ourselves. But I brought my swimming trunks. Uh, we know you do. Well, Charlie, uh, 
Why don't we go and see if we can't find a lot, huh? It ought to be around here someplace. Uh, what's the number? 197 Mountain Manor. Oh, uh, Mountain Manor. <laughs> well, um, uh, go on down the road a piece, and then you'll have to get out and walk a little while, and uh, you'll see the signs. Well, at least they got signs up. And a tent. <laughs> it's a beginning. <laughs> well, thanks. Happy landing. <laughs> Happy landing? What do you mean by that? Oh, that's just an expression, Charlie. Uh, it's an ideal spot. What for? Well, uh, hobby, uh, camping. Uh, it's going to be fine, Charlie. Yeah, you, you've got a real feeling for property. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go. Huh? <laughs> Well, I guess this is as far as we can drive. Yeah. My lot must be on the other side of the bushes. He said we had to walk a bit. Yeah. Well, I still don't see any pines, Charlie, but uh, it's quite a location. Yeah. And it's good to be at a dead-end street. Uh, that way you don't get much traffic. There you go. Okay, come on. Who do you think I am, Whistler's grandmother? I can navigate myself. Well, take it easy now, Charlie. All right. Oh. Are you okay? You're stubborn? Oh. No, no. It's mine. All right. I think I twisted my ankle into a pretzel. <laughs> don't touch it. Do you think you can stand on it, Charlie? Oh. I don't know. Well, even if you can, we're you're not going to be able to get up that hill. No. Should we do that? Well, we passed that ranger station on the way up here. I'll tell you, you fellas stay with Uncle Charlie and I'll hike back and see if I can get some help. Okay. I could split it for you if I had a couple of ten stakes. We learned how in Cub Scouts. If I had a ten stake, I'd hit myself over the head with it. Mountain matter. They ought to call it mountain goat matter. Hey, Robbie, go see if you can find my lot. Okay. And if you find it, put up a sale sign on it. <laughs> Not that anybody would be stupid enough to buy it. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, I found your lot. Yeah? It's got a cabin on it. A cabin? Well, sort of a cabin. The sign on the porch says 197. How about that for a bonus? Land and a cabin. Oh, boy. This I gotta see. Come on, you guys. Come on. Give me a hand. Well, Come on. Pick up easy, though. Don't follow you, Uncle Charlie. Don't uh -huh. worry. Don't worry. See? 197. The number's nailed right to the cabin. You call that a cabin? It's a slum. <laughs> I think it's a knee cabin, Uncle Charlie. Don't you, Ernie? Huh? Oh. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's probably a caretaker shack that the company's going to clear away. Yeah, that's probably it. But do you know something? This is not such a bad spot. Once they get rid of that eyesore... Why, it's terrific. Out all by ourselves, all the privacy in the world, no neighbors to bother us. Hey, here comes a guy. Probably to start taking away the shack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, how's it going for you? Come on, Will. Easy. That's the kick, 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 kick. Oh, howdy, folks. How are you? Looking to buy a lot? No, I bought one. What parcel did you buy? This one right here, number 197. Say, do you know when they're going to get rid of this old shack? Say, just hold your safety pins on my there, mister. This old shack here happens to be my home. Your home? Sure. Subdivision land ends with, with that line right over there. Let's see, uh, lot 197. Well, that's the piece of snuggles right up next to me. Well, what's my number doing on your porch? 
Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, I just took the borrow of that. You see, your uh, wife wanted some numbers on the house like the city folks. Uh, no hard feelings. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, good. Uh, you know, it'd uh, give me a lot of pleasure if uh, I could introduce you to my family. Oh. Hey, Ma! Oh, Ma! Come on out! We got the new neighbor folks! Neighbors, you say? Neighbor folks, you say? Sure, the goose goes barefoot. <laughs> folks, here's your new next door neighbors. La, la, la. This is my wife, Alma, and my girl, Lena Sue. Hi. Lena Sue's a nice shot till you get to know her. But I reckon it ain't gonna take you two darlings long to get acquainted. <laughs> hey, hey, come on over and sit down for a spell. Take all the weight off your feet. Come over here. Come on. Mighty, mighty fine having you people right next to us, like Alice. Oh, yeah. Sure place to see you. Oh. Besides, Cynthia. Hey, shut it. Oh, boy. Oh, be proudy. Oh, be proudy. Come here, honey. Come on. Yeah, Ma. He's such a sweet child. Yeah, Ma. Oh. <laughs> what did you do that for? Where's your manners at? Ain't I told you never to go shooting at strangers? Oh, gee, Ma. Go get, for heaven's sake. <laughs> You aim in the bill soon, I hope. I tell you, it's as lonesome as a skinny skunk up here. <laughs> but from now on, we're going to be like one big family. In and out of each other's place all the time. <laughs> you want a wager I could hit you softer than you could hit me? Hit softer? You aim to try? <laughs> okay. Oh, I know! Oh. <laughs> that slides to a rat. Sure is Thorgop. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, we got to go on home. Oh, what? Right. You haven't even looked at your property yet. The missus and I will walk you over while the young uns play, huh? You've got the only level lot in the whole parcel. Well, I, uh, what's that? It's a helicopter. Hey, he's coming right this way. Uncle Charlie, look, it's Dad. He's gonna land slap dive on your lot. Hey, Jim and Robbie, come on. Give yeah. me a hand. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Listen, goodbye. Goodbye. Hi. Hey, Dad, you got a helicopter. Yeah, I got it at the ranger station. Hey, this is great. Charlie, how's the anchor? I'll tell you later. Get me out of here. Okay. Bye. Why don't you get in first? Come on. Hey, Dad, do we all get to go? Yeah, we all get to go. Wait, wait, wait till I get in. You get on my lap. Okay. Ah! Charlie. Ah, 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 that's enough. What are you trying to do? Parboil me. <laughs> okay, Steve, what's the verdict? Well, Charlie, it looks like you've signed an airtight contract. As far as I can see, everything's legal. You read the small print. How can it be, Dad, when there isn't any clubhouse or golf course or any of that stuff? <laughs> the contract doesn't mention any of those things. It just guarantees the owner use of all facilities, present or projected. So, Charlie, I'm afraid you got exactly what you agreed to pay for. And don't forget the bonus. Our next door neighbors. <laughs> Did you pay for the lot in full, Uncle Charlie? No. Seventy-five bucks down. The rest I pay in monthly installments. So that's one problem solved. I don't have to worry what to do with my spending money for the next five years. Charlie, I've got an idea. Maybe I can get you off the hook. How, Steve? Well, I'll let you know. If it works. See you all tonight. Bye, Bye we had a helicopter service, Mountain Manor would become our most desirable area. Commute by helicopter to your hideaway in the Pines. You could ask $3,000 apiece for those lots. 
Is that so? Well, now, uh, about Mr. O'Casey's lot. Look, I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but we're not buying back O'Casey's lot. You see, we've got 24 other lots in Mountain Manor. You should be happy to own such a valuable piece of property. Yes. <laughs> when you put it that way, I, uh, I suppose he should. Well, thanks, anyway. So, Mr. Hargrove, I was just thinking, uh, Mr. O'Casey's lot seems to be the only level one in Mountain Manor. Now, I was just wondering where you were planning on building your heliport. Mr. Douglas, I, uh... The what? The helicopter. You know, where the helicopter will land and take off. Of course, I don't know why I'm worrying about it. I'm sure you'll come up with something. Goodbye, Mr. Hargrove. Oh, Mr. Douglas. Yes? How much would Mr. O'Casey take for his lot? Well, uh... 500 bucks? You got 500 bucks selling my lot back to Mr. Hargrove? How did you do it, Steve? Oh, I just let his pines whisper to him a little. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you. Charlie, you never have to thank us for anything. Just don't know I'll sit around here. What do you think that chocolate cake is doing in the kitchen? Chocolate cake? Let's go. I'm right behind you. Me too. Come on, Charlie. I'll give you a hand. I, I can walk. Get out of here. That pack of wolves won't leave you a crumb. Okay. <laughs> oh. And don't forget to pick up your big feet in there. I didn't wax that kitchen floor for my health. <laughs> What's so absorbing? Spanish. Hmm. How's it going? Estoy un poco corto de dinero esta semana, papa. Me puedes dar unos pocos dólares? Hmm. Well, uh, poco means little, and dólares is uh, money, I'm sure. So, uh, I get the general idea. <laughs> How about that? I can borrow in two languages. <laughs> Memorizing the verbs, the nouns, and the conjugations in the idioms of the language is very important. They have to be learned, but they take on new importance when you learn the history and culture from where the word derived. The heritage and culture of Spain is nobly represented by our guest today. I have long been an admirer of this. You might even say a fan. He's a lifelong family friend. So, with particular honor. And what could be more Spanish than to meet one of the great bullfighters of our time? My good friend, Manuel Torusa. Very known, perhaps, as Manuelo. Well, don't be embarrassed if you never heard of me. Many students in my country never heard of Nicky Mantle. Nicky <laughs> Mantle? Are there any aficionados in the class? Has anyone ever been to a corrida? A bullfight? Where? Mexico City. Did you enjoy? Well, what I saw of it. You didn't stay? I fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Madera has asked me to show you movies of my work. I hope you will see that bullfighting is an art. Manuelo, it would be best if I show the movies, then you answer questions. Fine. Daniel, las luces, por favor.
more than three inches from him, and he didn't even move. Yeah, he's pretty good, considering that he has a sword and the bull is unarmed. <laughs> Now, if there are any questions, the very attractive young lady. Are you married? <laughs> Don't you think my life is dangerous enough? <laughs> oh, Professor Madera, Nancy's fainted again. <laughs> Wasn't he the most? I mean, did you ever see anyone so graceful? His name, Manuela. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, just beautiful. <laughs> Ah, at last, I found you. Oh, hi, Professor. Christian Williams, Robbie Douglas. You know my friend, Manuelo? How you you are marvelous. Thank you. Robbie Douglas, perhaps you are free to help me. I have a class. If you could only entertain Manuelo just for an hour. Oh, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Robbie? Oh, sure. I live in a very good hands, mi amigo. Thank you. Hasta luego. Here. Sure. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you like some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you didn't show any movies of killing a bull. I don't think I'd like to see that. But that is part of bullfighting. Uh, you know, I've never been to a bullfight, but from what I hear, it's pretty cruel. To whom? The bull. More cruel than sending a bull to a slaughterhouse and chopping its head off? Well, at least he doesn't have to suffer. Well, maybe the bull will choose to suffer for a chance to fight for his life. I never heard of a foreman of the slaughterhouse being gored. What I mean is, the cruel part isn't the killing. The cruelty is the picadors and, and the guys who put those barbed, uh... Banderillas? Banderillas in his back to, to enrage him. No, that isn't that to enrage him. A fighting bull doesn't need to be enraged. A fighting bull is bred to attack and kill. Well, it, it wasn't his idea. Well, he's bred for four centuries to kill me. He is the most perfect instrument for killing yet born. Sooner or later, he always loses. Uh, true. But many, many times, for a moment in his life, he's the glorious victor. That's beautiful. I've got to get to the library before my next class. Are you coming, Gretchen? Oh, I have loads of time, Robbie. One of us better stay with Manuelo until Professor Madera gets back. My pleasure. Well, senor, it was nice to have met you. Have a nice trip home. Thank you. And if you ever come to my country, it would be my honor to be your host at the arena. Well, I don't think there'll be too much chance of my coming to Spain, but thanks anyway. I'll see you, Gretchen. Oh, sure you will, Robbie. Bye. Charlie, did Gretchen call? No, she didn't call. Are you sure? Look, if you're so anxious, be aggressive. Call her. Uh, after what she did this morning, I'm waiting for her to apologize. For what? Well, my Spanish professor brought in this bullfighter named Manuelo. You'd think she'd never seen a bullfighter. Had she? No. <laughs> you still gonna take a scuba diving tomorrow? Swimming around the bottom of the lake, Manuelo will be the furthest thing from her mind. <laughs> Hi. Where's your gear? Robbie, I had a sensational idea. To scuba dive without your gear. My uncle has a dairy farm. Oh, and there's a lake on the farm. Great. Robbie doesn't have a lake. He has a bull. Rob, I invited Manuelo to go with us. But I plan on the two of us being alone, scuba diving. Rob, we can go scuba diving anytime. Rob, please. Okay. It's just my way of saying thank you. He's the meanest one. Got to be awful careful because he is dangerous. I have great respect for all boys. Maybe you better not try it. Oh, no, I can't disappoint you. The danger is part of the good thing. I'll never think that bullfighting is, well, stupid again. It's, it's an art. It's a science. It's beautiful. Uh, sir, you are going to do some demonstrating? Oh, yes. <laughs> I will show you a few passes.
Well, he's certainly not afraid of that bull. Well, of course not. That's the business he's in. <laughs> Olay! Oh, you call that dangerous? It's plenty dangerous. I know that bull. Oh, I'm so grateful. so wonderful. I don't know too much about bullfighting, but that took real courage. Yeah, I guess it did. You're okay, senor. Okay? Well, it's impossible for anyone to be so grateful. I mean, ballet dancers, they don't have to worry about a bull. What do you call those things you do with the cake? Oh, I'll show you. The first pass I did, that's called Veronica, right? You call the bull with the left hand. Then you swerve the attention to the bull to the right side of the cage, right? Then you call him to the right side like this. Hey, turn on, turn on. And you move it. I can do it better without all this. Yeah, right? <laughs> then you move like this. This is like called a chicuelina. You go like this, and then you turn around. This is one of the most beautiful paths. You attract the bull from the falling picador. It's called a chicuelina. Now you call him like this, and you turn. funny to me. Might have been seriously hurt and on my property. Are you hurt? Oh, I'm fine. Let's go home. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. That was a real lesson. Yeah, it wasn't. It? So long. Bye-bye. Bye. Be careful, Dad. I think it was, Ern. <laughs> well, that's another game. <laughs> Snuffy Moran's father let Snuffy win. Oh, why don't you play with Snuffy Moran's father? <laughs> no kidding, you really wouldn't want me to let you win, would you? No. Oh, hi, Rob. Hi. Hey, you. Uh, what happened to you? Oh, I fell. Well, nothing serious. Well, the last I heard you were going scuba diving. Uh, what happened? Well, I, uh, I went bullfighting instead. Bullfighting? <laughs> in Bryant Park? With real bulls? I had a date with Gretchen, and it was her idea to go to her uncle's dairy with Manuelo, this bullfighter from Madrid. He's a guest of Professor Madera's, my Spanish teacher. Boy, I'd sure like to meet a real live bullfighter. He must be the bravest man in the world. Well, Gretchen seems to think so. Uh, Manuelo was showing us, uh, demonstrating his techniques at bullfighting, and... Uh, well, anyway, the bull chased me. Rob, you mean you actually tried to fight a bull? Well, it, it, it looked easy, Dad. Uh, the way this guy was making it such a big deal in front of Gretchen. You, uh, you risked getting hurt to show off for a girl, huh? Well, it was really more than that, Dad. I thought I had as much courage as anybody else. I didn't. Boy, when that bull snorted, I turned and ran. Well, Rob, courage is a personal thing. I mean, uh, well, the only one you really have to prove it to is yourself. I proved it to myself, all right. I proved I didn't have it. I think maybe you're confusing courage with foolhardiness. Knowing there's a real danger and running from it is a sign of maturity. Sometimes it takes a lot of courage to retreat. Dad, I just plain chickened out. Dad, what's the 
what's the guy supposed to do? Just stand there and get killed and show he's brave? I don't think so, man. But if he runs the rest of his life, he'll think he's a coward. You know, I thought I'd run into every conceivable problem raising you guys, but uh, this is a new one. Bravery? No. <laughs> My son, the bullfighter. <laughs> Ernie, you don't have to know what we're doing. You just do what I tell you. Well, how can you wait until Chip and Uncle Charlie and Dad are out of the house? Well, the fewer people who know what's going on, the better. Well, there's nobody else here but me. And I don't know what's going on. Well, that's why I picked you. Anybody else could figure it out. <laughs> Stand right over there. Okay. Now, come out. me. <laughs> so you knew. Sure. Well, I wasn't going to pass up a chance like that. Are you going to talk? No. A brother can't trust a brother. Thanks. Let's, uh, let's try it again. Wait a minute now. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, Alan. <laughs> so you heard, huh? Oh, Rosie, I'd have given anything to have seen you. You and that bull. It must have been hilarious. Uh, Gretchen, I don't suppose you'd like to go to the movies Friday night? Oh, I'm sorry, Robbie, but Manuelo asked me to go with him Friday. It's a farewell dinner given by Professor Madeira. Oh, I hadn't heard about that. They didn't want to scare you, Robbie. The main course is going to be steak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. You're a nice guy. Everybody can't be a Manuelo. Six o'clock, nothing but bills. Nobody called. They're all here but Robbie. Just one final question. Uh, where is Robbie? I can tell you one thing. He didn't go dancing. He had on his old clothes. And he was gritting his teeth. <laughs> oh, hi, Chip. Uh, when did he say he'd be home? He grunted. <laughs> hi, Ernie. Hi, Dad. Hey, Robbie said this Professor Madeira is giving a farewell party for that Spanish matador tonight. Uh, was Robbie invited? No. <laughs> is he still uh, carrying on big about that bull chasing him? He didn't mention it, uh, but you know, Robbie, by this time he's in love with a different girl and he's forgotten all about bullfighting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ernie, you, uh, you seem to know more than you're telling us. Well, I could tell you what isn't so, but it would be a breach of faith for me to tell you what is so. <laughs> Did Robbie swear you to silence? The same thing. I gave him my word. Now, wait a minute, Ernie. There's something going on that I should know about? Ask me things like that. All right, let's put it this way. Is Robbie out driving around in his car with a pretty girl? No. Is he doing something he wouldn't want me to know about? I can't answer. <laughs> Is Robbie trying to prove that he's not afraid of something? I can't answer. <laughs> Is there a phone where he went? No. Come on, fellas, Robbie's in trouble. Steve, you must know something we don't know. That's right, I know Robbie. <laughs> we'll be right... Where's your corral? Why, well, it's right over there. 
Anything I can do for you? Sorry, uh, maybe you could come along with us. Uh, we might need your help. What's going on? I'm Mark Williams. Oh, Mr. Williams, uh, my name's Steve Douglas. My son was out here the other day doing some uh, bullfighting, and uh, the bull chased him out of the corral. Oh, yes. Robbie Douglas. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid he came out here today to try it again. But I thought he was scared stiff. That takes a lot of courage. Well, I don't want him to get hurt. Say, Mr. Williams, uh, his son's in the corral, all right, but the bull isn't Red Devil. It's Herman. <laughs> oh, Mr. Douglas, just a minute. How much farther is the corral? On the other side of the big barn. But, Mr. Douglas, it isn't Red Devil, it's Herman. What? The bull, he's uh, fighting. Well, what difference does that make? Well, you see, the Spanish matador was fighting Red Devil. He's a brema, he's a killer. But Herman? He's our pet. Real quiet stock. Twelve years old, he can hardly move. <laughs> Why, my grandchildren ride on his back. <laughs> Could Rob tell the difference? Probably not. To most people, a bull is a bull. <laughs> Wait till I tell Rob. Chip, you're not going to tell him. None of us are going to tell him. But it's funny. He's not bull fighting. He's dad bull fighting. Ernie, he doesn't know the difference. In his mind, he's facing real danger. It take just as much courage for him to get in there with old Herman as it would for him to get in there with Red Devil. Then what do we say to him when he gets home? We don't say anything to him, Charlie. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't tell him we've been out here, Mr. Williams. I won't. Robbie's made his own personal covenant with himself. It's a private thing. I don't know what that means, but you can explain when I grow up. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Williams. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Gosh, you missed a great farewell party for Manuelo. I couldn't have made it anyway. I had things to do. Gretchen, I don't think Robbie ever wants to hear about bullfighters again. Oh, don't worry about it. It doesn't bother me. Robbie, now that Manuelo's gone back to Madrid, will you call me? I might. Excuse me. I wonder what I wanted with a bullfighter when I had Robbie. No, I don't have either one. Did you notice something? He didn't seem funny at all. <laughs> 